You don't need a trip to a Maryland seafood restaurant to make Maryland crab cakes. My recipe features jumbo lump crab meat and Old Bay seasoning to create a crispy browned cake you can make at home. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV. I'm your host, Peter Lee. On this channel, we teach you all about celebrating. We share recipes for food, hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, and we share entertaining tips too. Now we try and keep it all as simple as possible, especially for those of you out there who say that you just can't cook or entertain because we know that you really can. So if you like this episode, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that notification bell, and you'll get a new episode every single week. Today our celebration takes us to the sea we're making Maryland crab cakes, one of my favorites. Let's get started. So crab cakes, Maryland style or whatever style, it starts with crab. Today, we're going to use jumbo lump crab meat. Now in my bowl here, I have a pound or 453 grams of jumbo lump crab meat. Now, if you can get it fresh, if you live by the ocean and you can get it fresh, all the better. But most of us don't. So I use it from a can. This is what I got today. Now the jumbo, fresh or canned, is more expensive, but it really is preferred. It has a better flavor. And if you watch for sales and you get these cans, it's gonna last in your refrigerator for a long time. In fact, check the dates and you'll see most of the time they're good for at least a year in the fridge. So here's our crab. We're going to add some seasoning. We're going to start with Old Bay seasoning. This is Old Bay. This is found readily on the East Coast, but you can get it online and probably in most stores these days. This is a seafood seasoning. If you can't find it, you can use another crab seasoning, but this is the preferred. I'm going to use just one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to just sprinkle it over the crab meat. Next, scallions. I want a little freshness, a little herbage. I have four scallions, just the green part, just chopped up right in. A little more herbs, some parsley today. Tablespoon, chopped up. Just gonna add a little more brightness, a little lift. Next, I want to start binding this together. So I'm gonna add breadcrumbs. Now, you need up to four tablespoons, but I'm gonna start with just two. And the reason is every batch of crab is gonna be a little different. If this is enough, it'll hold together. If it's too wet, I have two more tablespoons on the side. So I'm gonna add these in. I'm gonna give this just a little mixy right now, just to start it coming together. But I wanna be careful and not break up these lumps too much. All right, now to bind this together for some mayonnaise. This is a quarter cup or 60 grams. Right in. Get that all in there. And then a large egg, just slightly beaten up. Finally, I wanna add a little more seasoning. I know it seems like mayonnaise and Old Bay are salty, but you do need a little bit more salt. Just a healthy pinch. And today I'm using white pepper. White pepper, it won't show flakes in the, in the crab meat, but it also has a little more earthier taste to it. So good grinding of that. Right in. Now we're gonna mix this together gently. Really doing kind of folding action. We want to get that egg and that mayonnaise incorporated through. Smells wonderful already. Now I can tell just by looking already, it's still a little wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of the breadcrumbs. I have two more tablespoons reserved, and I'll try and add maybe half of that. And we'll give it a stir. Now notice I'm folding, I'm going from the center Flipping it over and turning the bowl. That's folding. Now 
And I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest of these today. That should do it. Okay, so this is pretty well mixed, I think. Now we're going to make our cakes. We put this aside. I have a little sheet pan here. And I've just lined it with some parchment paper. If you don't have parchment, you can use wax paper. This is just to help with cleanup. So we're going to divide this into four equal parts. And using your impeccably clean hands, you're going to make them into little cakes. And actually, they're very big, healthy cakes. And look how well that's holding together just from that extra breadcrumb. That there. Few little pieces left over. We want to use it all. It's expensive. All right. Now, wipe my little hands. These have to chill. You don't want to just try and cook these right now because they'll just fall apart and disintegrate in your pan. So I'm going to cover these with plastic wrap and I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. Now longer is better. You can do this up to 24 hours, hours in advance, which is a great help if you're doing this for entertaining. Now what is that going to do? It's going to allow all the flavors to come together and marry and be delicious. It's also going to let those breadcrumbs soak up any extra moisture and hold those cakes together. We are ready to fry some crab cakes. And look at these beauties. I took them. I had them in the fridge. I just took them out. I let them sit for a full hour. I had the extra time, so I thought, let them go. Let all those flavors marry. You can do it as little as so 30 minutes. But remember, the longer, the better. So here they are. Before we fry, we need to do a little prep work quarter cup or 60 mils of vegetable oil. Vegetable oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil, so you wanna use something like that. Plus it's a neutral flavor. We don't wanna interfere with the flavors in these crab cakes. Right in my pan, this is a cold pan, you'll notice, and it's nonstick because I don't wanna give these little cakes any chance to stick and break apart. Let's get this heating. Maybe. There we go. All right. We're going to heat this on medium heat. We want to heat it really until it starts to shimmer. You make it a little wisp of smoke. You don't want it smoking all the way, but just so the surface starts to shimmer. You'll know. While that's heating up, we need to give this a little bit more. So we're going to give these a little dredge and flour. In this dish, I have a quarter cup of flour, which weighs out to about 45 grams. This is just plain all-purpose flour, nothing fancy about it. Again, I didn't season it because I don't want to interfere with any of the flavors. I want to enhance. So it's very simple. Now, gently pick these up. They're firm and dense, but they are still a little fragile. Carefully, just lightly dredge like that on the sides. Don't worry if a scallion falls off or something, it's fine. Alrighty, right back here. That's all you need. Okay. Now my oil is just starting to shimmer. I wanna give it just another moment. Here's a way you can test it. I have a little piece of scrap here. Not quite ready. If it had sizzled, it'd be ready. Let the oil get hot. All right, now this little piece of crab I put in is starting to sizzle. I'm seeing a lot of shimmer. So I think we're ready to fry. You don't want it so super hot that you're gonna get that big dramatic sizzle sound, but you want it hot that it doesn't soak up all the oil. You want a little sizzle there. Now, some cooks on TV will just put these in with their hands. I'm not so brave. I'm gonna use a spatula because these are still delicate. All right, right in. There we go. Got a little sizzle there. It's just right. We're going to put these in. 
We're gonna let these go for four, maybe five minutes on the first side. So let's get them in. All right. Whoops. There we go. Give you a little room, spread out. It's been four minutes. Let's flip these over. I'm going to use another spatula to help me because these are so delicate. I don't want to put my hand in a hot pan of grease. Better be safe than sorry. Let's just flip that over. Oh, look at that. That's exactly what you want. All righty, we are gonna let this go another four minutes on this side. That's gonna develop the crust and it's gonna make sure everything gets heated all the way through. It's been four minutes on the second side and they are done. I'm gonna cut the heat. I'm gonna take these out. I have a little paper towel here in my tray to let them have a little drain. Now, normally, I might just pick up my fork and dig into one of these for you right now. But, you know, I want to give them a moment to rest. They just came out of a hot pan. They need to kind of catch their breath. And I'm feeling a little fancy spancy tonight. So I'm going to show you how I would plate these if I were serving them to company. We are ready to plate these crab cakes. I have a nice plate here. Have a little salad. This is just some arugula, or in the UK, known as rocket. I just dressed it simply with oil and vinegar, a little salt and pepper. The flavor of arugula is bright and harsh and peppery, and it just explodes in your mouth. It's gonna be a nice counterpart to these crispy, creamy crab cakes. But I kept it simple because I don't wanna compete with them. I want to complement them. Now we need some sauce. There's always a debate, do you have tartar sauce or cocktail sauce? I say, why not both? So I have my favorite store-bought, believe it or not, store-bought cocktail sauce, and that's okay. I'm gonna put a big dollop right here, maybe a little bit more, and we're gonna just drag it through. Look at that, simple. Let's turn this guy. Here's my favorite tartar sauce. We're gonna do the same thing. Big dollop. Drag it through. Right over there. Now, our crab cake. I think this one looks good. We'll go right in the center. How beautiful is that? Now this is ready for me to taste and I really just can't wait. So I'm going for it. Ooh. So that comes apart, just perfectly steaming hot. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I need a moment. Mm. There's so much crab flavor from that jumbo crab meat. It's great texture. And you see it's holding its shape, but it's all crab and no filler because we just use a little bit of breadcrumbs. We'll see you on Tuesdays for our regular episodes and Fridays for Basic Skills Day or Cocktail Fridays. So I'm gonna go eat some crab cakes and drink my wine, and I want you to watch some of these episodes over here. So until next time, cheers.